Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS. So today in this session, we are going to discuss about previous year's prelims questions analysis. So why this series? So let me give you a small introduction regarding this series. So what is the importance of this series? Why we came up with this series? So I think you might have seen many toppers interviews. So in those interviews, so there will be one common point of many toppers that is analyzing of previous questions. So why this analyzing of previous questions is important? Especially, yes, we have a guide in our preparation that is UP syllabus. Just having only syllabus and if you are following this syllabus, it is not at all enough. Because we need to understand how the questions will be asked by UPSC from that so and so syllabus. Correct? So it is very very important that you are understanding how the questions will be coming up from that so and so topic in our UPSC paper. So what will be the advantage after analyzing this previous year's questions paper? Yes, you will be having this doubt obviously. So the first advantage here is you can understand from which topic there are number of questions will be asked. You can understand which are the favorite topics of UPSC. You can understand so whether UPSC want to test the basic thing or it is testing the advanced levels. So how questions are coming from easy level, medium level to difficult level. So how the questions will be framed. And you can understand your strong areas where are you you where you stand. It is a, in which areas you are strong and which areas you are weak. And let me say like how we are going in this series. So in this series, we are going to analyze the questions from 2013. So you will be having a question like why ma'am only 2013 from 2013. So the reason here is from 2013 onwards, there were some changes that is made by this UPSC in this prelims. So because of this, we are analyzing questions from this 2013. And we are not analyzing 2013 paper entirely in one go. We are dividing questions based on the subject. If you complete this art and culture or if you complete this geography and after watching this video, then you will be getting idea like so, which are the questions appeared in this so and so year from this so and so subject? And you can also understand which are the some important areas that you have to focus more. Okay, so here we are taking year wise questions that is related to a single subject. For example, we are going to discuss about art and culture questions which appeared in 2013. There were about 9 questions which appeared in this art and culture in this 2013 paper. So in this session, we are going to analyze those 9 questions. And the next video, we are going to discuss 2014 art and culture questions. So after completing entire this art and culture, we are moving on to this ancient history. And after completing this ancient history questions from 2013 to 2022, we are moving on to medieval and later on modern. Like that, we will be completing entire entire previous years questions from 2013 to 2012. I know that it will take some time but even it will take some time I want to complete this series within three to four months such that so this will be helpful for the aspirants who are going to appear in this 2023 prelims. So if you analyze these questions and if you are making some notes regarding this important points then obviously clearing of this prelims will be very easy. And nowadays students you are facing a lot of problem in clearing prelims. So I want to come up with a solution through this series of analyzing previous years questions of your prelims. So please support me and try to share this video to your friends such that it will increase the reach and even it will be motivate me to come up with the more videos. Okay. So now let's get started with our discussion. And let us try to see the first question. So the first question is on screen. So the first question here is which of the following characterizes or characterize the people of Indus Valley civilization. So one important tip I want to give here is so this Indus Valley civilization is one of the important 
and even favorite topic of UPSC. So every year, either from ancient history or from this art and culture, you will get a question from this IVC for sure. So please be prepared with this topic thoroughly. So now let us try to see the first statement. So first statement here is, they possessed great palaces and temples. If you have completed your basic reading of ancient history, yes, you might be knowing about these palaces of this IVC. So we have citadel, okay, we have lower city. So here western part we have citadel and eastern part of the city we have this lower city. So in this, in this citadel, so in this upper citadel, yes, we have the palaces and it is a residence of the kings. But the normal working class people, they used to live in this lower city. So if you see this diagram in your Nitin Singhania or in your ancient history, yes, you know that yes, palaces are there. So yes, UPSC want to test you whether you know about whether temples are present in this IVC or not. So yes, UPSC is, it will play a very, very small tricks to eliminate as many students as possible in this first phase of your examination itself. So please find out the some tricks where UPSC want to play with you. So here if you're talking about temples in the excavations of this IVC, there was no temple-like structure which had been been excavated so this is the first important thing then you will be having a doubt like so how we can know about the religion of this ivc yes because of some excavations because of the arts of this ivc because of some terracotta figurines because of seals yes we know about the religion okay they used to worship mother goddesses they used to worship pasupati deva he is the god of animals or the lord of animals and one more thing here is they also worshipped sexual organs sex organs for example yoni and as well as lingam so because of this excavation series we understand that they worship both male and as well as female that is mother goddesses and as well as pashpati deva so this second statement is absolutely correct and if you have read your art arts of this indian valley civilization from your nitin singhania or even if you've gone through your old NCRT of ancient India, yes, you will be sure that, yes, both male and female deities, they were worshipped. And the third statement here is, they employed horse-driven chariots in warfare. So to understand this statement, yes, we have to go back to domestication of animals in this IVC period. Yes, there are a number of evidences. So recent current affairs also said that, yes, the milk-related particles, you are present in the pots which are unearthened in this IVC, correct? So here, yes, if you're talking about domestication of animals during this IVC period, they domesticated, they domesticated sheep, goat, buffaloes, cattle, etc. But there is no evidence of domestication of this horse. But there is one exception. So we have horse evidence in Sarkotada. It is a, one of the IVC site. So only in this one IVC site of Sarkoteta, yes, we have the evidence of horse. So if, if you see or if you think that, so these horses were domesticated by this IVC and they used in, the, in, this, in this warfare means, yes, in, in every site, yes, we used to find this horse little evidence, but it was not. So because of this, so they didn't domesticate this horse and they didn't use this horse driven chariots in the warfare. So this statement is incorrect. So here which statements are correct? Only second statement is correct. And if you see the demand of the question, it is asking to identify the correct statements. So many a times here UPC aspirants in that examination hall because of tense, because of anxiety, so they will be not seeing whether question is asking to identify correct statements or incorrect statements. So one advice from me is, so please round up first of all whether it is asking correct statement or incorrect statement so that, so it will be helpful to decrease the chance of going with the wrong answer. So now let us try to see the options. So first option is A, 1 and 2. Second option is 2 only. Third option is 2 and 3. And last option is none. So which is the correct answer? 
only two that is option b is the correct answer so in this way you have to analyze each and every statement which is given in the question such that it will improve your chance of getting correct answer so i think you might have got some good and new points so please try to add these points in your notes okay so now let us move on to next question so now you can see the second question on the screen the second question is a very simple and very direct question so many a times many aspirants they don't know that even without coaching also even if you are preparing yourself or you are going for self study in your homes also they can clear this upsc because upsc will be giving you the basic questions in out of 100 questions in upsc paper so 40 questions will be there even they are very easy and even without coaching also you can you can guess the correct answer for that so and so question so it is a one of the example so this question is one of the example okay so here the statement or the question here is some buddhist rock cut it is not out it is rock cut so it is a rock cut caves or called chaityas while others are called viharas so what is the difference between the two so it is a very basic question and you basically want to test you whether you know the difference between these chaityas and viharas or not so if you go through this buddhist architecture so you will be having different architecture especially three types of architecture first one is stupas second one is chaityas and third one is viharas so there are three types of buddhist architecture which is seen so we are talking about stupas they are like mounds okay so in this stupas we have three types of stupas again sajiva stupa paribojaka stupa uddeshika stupa and if you are talking about the sajiva stupa they are built on the original relics of buddha and here second one is paribojaka stupas they are built on the objects or even for the bodhisattvas and the fourth one uh, sorry third one here is uddeshika stupas so in this uddeshika stupas they mainly built as a, like grants okay so these are three types of stupas and next one is chaityas is the monks who are following this buddhism is yes, they will be offering prayers so where they will offer prayers for example hindus for hindus we have temples correct and for muslims they will go to mosque and christian they will be going to churches so in the same way at that time of buddhism which was prevalent so at that time that is from 5th century is the monks they used to offer prayers to this buddha in this prayer halls so those prayer halls those prayer halls they are called as chaityas and these monks who are following this buddhism yes they will be moving from one place to another place so whenever they are moving from one place to another place yes they need some rest so where they will take rest so they used to take rest in this viharas so they are called as resting places resting places or dwelling houses resting place or dwelling houses so these are the three important buddhist architecture we will be studying in our nithin singhania so now let us try to see the options which are given by upsc and how the tricks are played by upsc now let us try to understand so first option here is vihara is a place of worship and chaitya is a dwelling place so this statement is interchanged so viharas they are dwelling place and chaitya are the prayer halls as we studied the concept just now and the second option here is chaityas is a place of worship while viharas is the dwelling place of monks yes this option is absolutely correct and now let us try to see the next options also so your option c is chaitya is the stupa and it is present on the far end of the cave while vihara is the hall exile to it it is not correct and this one is there is no material difference between this chaityas and viharas so if there is no difference so why we came up with this two words chaityas and viharas yes there is a difference so correct option here is option b that is 
Chaiti as they are the worship or place of worship or prayer halls and this Vihara as they are dwelling place of monks. So this is about the second question. And Buddhism is also one of the favorite area of UPSC. And now let us try to see the next question. That is the third question. So now you can see this question on the screen. So which one of the following describes the best concept of Nirvana in Buddhism? So this question is also Buddhism. So in the same year, in the 2013 itself, there were two questions which asked you from Buddhism. So please make a note of this Buddhism in under the important topics to be done in art and culture from prelims point of view. So to understand this first you have to know about five important events in the life of Buddha. So first one is birth of Buddha. Second one is leaving the palace. Maha, Mahadi Nishkramana. And third event is he gave the first sermon. And the next one here is finally he got enlightenment third one is enlightenment and the fourth one is the first sermon and fifth one is death mahaparinirvana so nirvana means nothing but enlightenment okay so here if you're talking about the what is exact meaning of this nirvana so before that you have to know already some signs so for the birth the sign or the symbol used here is lotus and leaving the palace Mahadhanishkramana, it means leaving the palace. So this leaving the palace, it is represented by riderless horse. And third one is Nirvana, that is uh, this is enlightenment. So after getting this enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, so here it is represented by the Bodhi or people tree. And the fourth one is first sermon. Okay, okay so this first sermon, which is mainly given in Sarnath, it is represented by wheel. And last one is death of Buddha. Okay. So that is Mahaparinirvan. So in this Mahaparinirvan, it is represented by Stupa. So in this way, you can also expect the question from the symbols of this five great events of this life of Buddha. So this Nirvana. Okay. So this Nirvana means nothing but enlightenment. So now let us try to see the options. So first option is the extension of the flame of desire so actually this nirvana the root word means to blow out it means the extension of flame of desire and second one is complete annihilation of self not at all and next one here is a state of bliss and rest so finally at this maha parinirvana that is at the death yes we have bliss and rest but this nirvana means the extension of the flame of desire and next Last option is the mental stage beyond all comprehension. So the correct option for this question here is option A. That is the extension of the flame of desire. And now let us try to see the next question. So next question you can see on the screen. So this question is about Jain doctrine. So in 2013 itself, there was one question from IVC, from Buddha, two questions. And the next one is Jainism. Okay, from this Jainism also, there is one question. So the question here is, which of the following statements is or or applicable to Jain doctrine? The first statement is, the surest way of annihilating karma it is to practice penis. To understand about this penis in this Jain doctrine, there is one important statement. That is, Swadhyaya Param Tap. So this Swadhyaya Param Tap says that this penis, it mainly washes away our karma. So if you want to completely destroy this karma, it is only through the practice of penis. So this is mainly the thing which mainly said by this Vadeya Param Tap. And next statement here is, every object, even the smallest part has soul. So if you see this one important principle of this Chinese and even Buddhism is non-violence. They practice non-violence strictly in this Chinese. So because of this, they say that even every small particle, even microorganisms, they have the soul. So because of this, practicing of agriculture is also not allowed in this Jainism because whenever they are going for agriculture, yes, they have to go for cleaning of their fields and they will be going for ploughing, etc. So in that event, so that will lead to the loss. 
okay that will leads to killing of number of organisms which are present in that so and so area so because of this they want to practice extreme non violence and even they say no for agriculture and third statement is karma is the bane of the soul and must be ended so it says that yes karma is the bane of soul and must be ended that means if you want to get liberation okay liberation can be achieved by eliminating karma from the soul so how can we achieve this liberation to eliminate this karma from the soul then only you can be getting this liberation so these are three statements actually these three statements are correct so now let us try to see the option so here upsc it is trying to test whether you know about this jain doctrine or not so whether you understand the principles of this jain jainism or not so this is a one basic thing and if you see the options so option a is one only and option b is 2 and 3 and option c is 1 and 3 and option d is 1 2 and 3 so correct option is d 1 2 and 3 so here you have to revise this jainism and you have to make a small notes regarding this jain doctrine also and now let us try to see next question that is a question number 5 so you can see the question on the screen so this question it is about indian rock cut architecture so this question is about cave architecture especially so with reference to the history of indian rock cut architecture consider the following statements so first statement is the caves at badami they are oldest surviving rock cut caves in india so here upsc it is testing that whether you know the sequence of caves which are old and which are new and you have to make a list of different caves for example badami caves bag caves ajanta caves elora caves sith universal caves okay so you have to make a list of the caves and you have to see so which is the oldest and you have to also make a table so please follow my advice you can take caves on one side you can write the timeline and during which period it developed and what are the highlights of that so and so cave so whether we can see viharas whether we can see chaityas or we can see only the hinduism jainism or buddhism like that you can see the highlights because actually in this 2013 itself there were two questions which appeared in this in this 2013 from this art and culture so this cave architecture is also one important area that you need to focus so now let us try to see the statements and you will be getting some new points so first one is the caves at badami they are the oldest surviving rock cut caves but actually this badami caves they are not oldest so the oldest caves is barabar caves okay so oldest cave is barabar caves so if you see the timeline of this badami and as well as barabar caves so this barabar caves uh, especially they came in this 3rd century bc they came in 3rd century bc and this badami caves in 7th century bc so this barabar caves are more older than compared to that of this badami caves so this first statement is incorrect and second statement is the this barabar rock cut caves they were originally made for made for this ajivikas by emperor chandragupta maurya so one important and the fact regarding this barabar caves are so these caves they were made for this ajivikas by this maurian empire by this maurian empire so if you see the timeline they came up in this 3rd century bc so if you see the timeline of this uh, mauryas okay actually at that time so we have ashoka and as well as even they developed by this dasaratha dasaratha who was son of this ashoka so ashoka and dasaratha they developed this barbar caves but not by this chandragupta maurya so in this way also here you pay a test you so which is a timeline of the caves and at that timeline who were the ruler so there is a some link also so because of that i said to make a table of this caves timeline and king okay because here there are two or three uh, things to interconnected in this question so first you have to know which cave is the oldest and who was the ruler who developed that and belongs to which dynasty or which empire okay so try to follow my suggestions and try to clear this prelims of this 2023 
So next third statement here is at Ellora caves were made up of different faiths. So if we're talking about Ellora caves, how many are present in total? So we have thirty four caves are present in this Ellora. So out of this twelve caves, they are dedicated to Buddhism, and there are seventeen caves which are dedicated for Jainism, and there are five caves for Hinduism. But if you see in Ajanta, they are uh, they are different when you are comparing with that of Ellora. And let me know what are the difference between this Ajanta caves and as well as Ellora caves. Okay, what are the difference between this Ajanta caves and Ellora caves? So please let me know in the comment box. So here Ellora caves total we have thirty four caves. Out of with out of this thirty four, twelve were dedicated to Buddhism, and seventeen were dedicated to Jainism, and five were dedicated to Hinduism. So here. This statement is correct. It says that at Ellora, caves were made up of different faiths. For example, Hinduism, Jainism, and Buddhism. So this third statement is absolutely correct. So here again, this question asks to identify the correct statements. So now let us try to see the options that are given. How confusing they are. So option A is one only, and option B is two and three only, and option C is three only. And option four is one and two and three. So correct option here is C three only. So now let us move on to next question. So next question is question six. So now let us try to see the question on the screen. So this question is about Chinese traveler. Name here is Huyan Sang. So question here which asked about the one important book that is C U K. Okay, so here this CUK book was written by this Huyan Sang. So it's it is a just a one prelims question. So who is the author of this book CUK? That is Huyan Sang. So question here is asking about some important highlights of this CUK book. So this topic that you can cover in your within Singania. Okay, so the question here is Chinese traveler. Yuan Chang, that is Huyan Sang, who visited India, recorded the general conditions and culture of India at that time. In this context, which of the following statements are correct? So, first statement is the roads and river routes; they were completely immune of robbery. So, actually, here this Huyan Sang, he visited India during the time of this Harsha, and he also studied in this Nalanda University. And he spent many years in India in this Huyan in this Harsha's period. So at that time, in his book that is Siyuki, he wrote about what are the experiences that he encountered. So he encountered decoitry. So the first element is incorrect because roads and river routes they were not completely immune from robbery. Yes, there were some decoitry which happened, and even he himself personally encountered with this decoitry. And second one is as regards punishment for offences, ordeals by fire, water, and poison. They were instruments for determining innocence or guilt of person. So at that time, so punishment it is mainly based on which kind of offence you did. For example, if you did this social offence, so there will be cutting of nose, cutting of ears, or cutting of hands or legs will be happen. But for the minor punishments, they will be giving just fine. Okay. And how they used to identify whether you are innocent or guilt, it is by using this ordeal of fire, ordeals by fire, and water and poison. So those are some instruments which are mainly used for determining innocence of guilt, innocence or guilt. So this statement is absolutely correct. And this one is the tradesmen had to pay duties at ferries and barrier stations. Yes, the tradesmen they have to pay the little, little duty or little tax. So this statement is also correct. So here two and three are correct. So now let us try to see options. So option one, option A is one only, and option B is two and three, option C is one and three, and option four is one, two and three. So which is the correct option? That is two and three. And here you have to identify correct answer itself. Okay. And now let us try to see next question. That is question number seventh. So this question it is about caves. So as I said, so there was one question we already discussed about this cave architecture. 
So again, there is one question which is seen. Okay, and this question which is again seen in that same paper. So you can understand, you can, I hope that you are getting something, some knowledge regarding how we can identify which are the important topics in this UPSC or not. Correct? Are you following me? So now let us try to see this question. So consider the following historical places, Ajinta Caves, Leipakshi Temple, Sanchi Stupa. Which of the above places or is or or known for mural paintings? First of all, you have to know idea regarding this mural paintings. So if you go to this painting chapter, it is a very, very lengthy chapter in your Nithin Singhania. But there is no choice, you have to go to this paintings. So in that paintings, we will be studying about prehistoric paintings on the caves. And later on, we will be studying about this mural paintings and even folk paintings, miniature paintings, etc. And this paintings is one of the important topic where you can get question in your prelims and even there is also the chance of getting question from these paintings in your mains also. So if you see the caves you are given here is Ajanta Lepakshi and Sanchi Stupa. Yes, in this Ajanta caves, yes, mural paintings are there. For example, in the cave 1, cave 2, cave 12, cave 16. So we will be having this cave, um, this mural paintings. And the mural paintings in this Ajanta caves are related to this Jataka stories of Buddha. So Jataka stories means nothing but the life stories of Buddha. And this one is Lepakshi temple. So in this Lepakshi temple also we can see this mural paintings and they were developed during this Vijayanagara period. They were developed by these Vijayanagara kings. And if you see regarding this Sanji Stupa, yes we have number of sculptures there but there are no mural paintings in this Sanji Stupa. So correct option here is only 1 and 2. So Ajanta case we have this mural paintings and this Lepakshi temple yes we have this mural paintings. So one thing here UPSC it is trying to know that, it is trying to test you that whether you know difference between this Thupa and temple or uh, this Ajanta caves or uh, Lepakshi temple. So here it is it is just trying to whether you know that this Sandhi Stupa which is not having any paintings. So Sandhi Stupa which is having architecture we will be having good sculptures but there is no paintings in this Sanchi Stupa. So it is a very very basic thing. Now let us try to see options. So option A is 1 only, option B is 1 and 2 only, option C is 1, 2 and 3 and option D is none. So correct option here is 1 and 2 only. Okay so I want to give you one homework or else I will say orally. So in which areas we have this mural paintings. So in Ajanta we can see, in, El in Elora we can see, in Bagh we can see, in Sitanival we can see and Arumamalai we can see and also in Lepakshi temple. So these are some cave architecture or temple architecture we can see this mural paintings. Okay and now let us move on to next question. Yes. So the question here is question number 8 and you can see the question on the screen. So question here is with reference to history of philosophical thought in India. Consider the following statements regarding Sankhya school. So actually there are 6 orthodox, 6 orthodox philosophies that are present in India. So one of them is Sankhya. So who was the founder that is Kapila. So now let us try to see the statements. So first one is Samkhya does not accept the theory of rebirth of transmigration of soul. So all these six orthodox religious philosophies, they believe in the theory of rebirth. So this first statement is absolutely wrong. And next one is Samkhya holds that it is a self-knowledge that leads to liberation and not only the exterior influence or agent. So to understand this, let us see some basics of this Samkhya philosophy. So Samkhya means nothing but enumeration. So in Telugu especially, so to, uh, to uh, if you want to use this numbers, so we can say Samkhya. Samkhya in Telugu that is used for this, uh, for this word that is numbers in Telugu. Okay. So Samkhya means enumeration. So in this Samkhya philosophy, it will believe Purusha and Prakruti. Okay, and if you are talking about soul or life which is present or jiva, jiva means nothing but there is a 
combination of this purusha and as well as this prakriti so here in the samkhya philosophy they will not believe the existence of god but they believe this theory of free birth and apart from that according to the samkhya philosophy it says that knowledge knowledge is important for this liberation okay so it says that self knowledge it leads to liberation it is not by any exterior influence or any exterior agent so this second statement is correct okay so this second statement is correct and this first statement is incorrect so now let us try to see the options option a is one only option b is two only option 3 uh, option c is uh, both one and two and option d is neither one not two so correct option a is option b two only and now let us try to see the last question that is question 9 so this is the last question which appeared in this uh, 2013 from this art and culture so this question is regarding our dance forms so this dance forms is also one of the important favorite area of ubsc so please make a list so the question here is in the context of cultural history of india a pose in dance and dramatics called thribanga has been a favorite of indian artist from ancient times till today so which of the following statements best describes this pose to understand this pose i have to draw a diagram so here thribanga means three poses will be there and that means three bends that is seen so you can see this thribanga pose if you go through our ancient history especially we know about this dancing girl image dancing girl okay statue that we got in this ivc so this dancing girl also she is in this thribanga pose and even i think you might have seen image of krishna so image of krishna when he is standing before this cow that is kamadenu so he will be in this thribanga pose and whenever he is he is mainly using or blowing flute in that time also he will be standing in this thribanga pose actually this thribanga pose which is mainly seen in this odissi dance okay so we will be having three bends in our body so now let us try to see the options so first one is one leg is bent okay one leg is bent and the body is slightly but oppositely curved at the waist and neck so actually three bends which is seen first at the leg that is at the knee knee bend will be there and this one is at waist and next one it is at neck so three three bends we can see in our body that is called as three banga three means uh, tri means or uh, three means three right banga means bends or we can see like poses so the second option here is racial expressions hand gestures and make up or combined to come symbolize certain epic or historic character so we can see full makeup and hand gestures especially seen in this bharatanatyam that is called as mudras and this one is the movements of body face and hands are used to express one self or to tell story so storytelling which is mainly seen in uh, not odyssey but even in the other classical dance so let me know in which classical dance we are using this uh, body movements face and hands to express one self or to tell story so telling story which is seen in which classical dance let me know in the comment box and next one here is a little smile slightly curved waist and certain hand gestures are emphasized to express the feelings of love and erotism okay it is not the thing so feelings of love and erotism is seen in which dance let me know in the comment box okay so this is your homework and the correct answer here is option a so now let me tell you what are the highlights of this class so first of all you have to make a note of important topics or the favorite topics of upsc first one is ivc second one is buddhism third one is jainism fourth one is cave architecture and fifth one is paintings and seventh one is dances and even travelers foreign travelers to india so these are some important topics and you have to know about which areas upsc is focusing and upsc it is playing games how it is playing games or what are the tricks played by the upsc and in which areas you should be careful correct so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you really like this video 
hit the like button and please watch this video completely so that you will be getting some insights and after watching this first video so you have to also watch the other videos which are going to come up in this series in the future so this will be exclusively helpful to clear your prelims okay so 100% i can give you assurance that so if you watch this series completely yes clearing of this upsc prelims will be having more chances so about 90% of increasing of chances after watching this full series so i will try myself to complete this series within 3 to 4 months of time okay so this will be helpful for the students who are going to clear, going to appear this 2023 prelims so by this i'm concluding thank you so much and have a nice day